Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the data table feature that you can add into your screen flows. It's a really cool feature and it's pretty useful. Uh, so we're gonna be coming up with a little uh, dummy use case scenario and building it out in my sandbox today. But if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notification bell. I'm putting out new Salesforce content each week. And let's just go ahead and jump into this video. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure we're in the flow builder here and we are gonna be building a screen flow today. And as you can see, I have that selected. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the create button and we'll create our flow. Now the scenario we're gonna work with today is if maybe you had a button on a dashboard or something and you launch this flow and what you're gonna be able to do is you're gonna be able to search an account name and it can be just part of the account name. It's gonna be a contains formula. And with the data table feature, it'll display all the relevant results. And from that, you can select the account you want. And on the next screen, it will display all the available contacts um, that are underneath that account. So to do this, we're gonna go ahead and add our first element in, which is gonna be a screen element here. And we'll click screen. Now I'm just gonna call this screen one. And I'm going to hide the header because I don't wanna show that. And I don't want the pause button to be visible, so I'm gonna hide that. And there's no need for a previous button either, so I'm gonna hide it as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and change the name of finish to next. So I'll use a custom label, and we'll just type next. All right, now we're gonna add in a text box. You can either scroll down to it or you can start typing. We're gonna add a text in for the label. I'm gonna call this enter account name. And when you click out, the API name automatically populates. I wanna make this required. I wanna leave the default value blank. You can always add in component visibility to these things, but for our scenario, we're not gonna be doing that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and hit done. I'm gonna go ahead and save the flow so I don't lose any information. I'm just gonna call this uh, data table flow and hit save. All right, so we entered in our account name. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a get records element in here and we're gonna get the account records based on what we inputted. So we're gonna call this get account, and the object is account. Now here's the conditions. So for field, you can click in here, and I'm just gonna type name. So account name, we're gonna change this to contains. And then as you can see, there's a bunch of different options, but under screen components, you're gonna see enter account name. And that's the field, the text box field from the first screen. So you're gonna get any account that contains the name of what we inputted. And I wanna select, make sure you change this or the data table won't function properly. You need to select all records for how many records to store. And we're gonna store all the fields. So we're gonna hit done. Now we're ready to add in that second screen and we're gonna have our first data table. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the plus sign screen i'm gonna call this screen two you can call these whatever you want hide the footer and i don't need the pause element so i'm going to get rid of that as well and we're going to change this to next and that's just personal preference for me all right so what we're going to do is we're going to actually put in the data table so you see it sitting right here, it's called data table. Just go ahead and click on it and it'll drop it in for you. The API name, we're gonna call this account data table. The labels data table, you can change this to whatever you would like to call the label. I'm just gonna leave it that. You can use the label as the title if you want. So the source collection is where are the records that need to be displayed coming from? So when you click in here, and as you can see, read the accounts from Get Records here, and we're gonna grab that, and that's gonna be our source collection. Now you're gonna need to configure some other stuff in here to get this to work. Now, when you configure rows, you can have multiple rows or single, or maybe you just want them to view only, and then you can set other options here, but we don't wanna do that. We need to configure our columns. You have to have at least one, um, and the way you do that is, is any field that's on the account, someone type in name, and I'll just hit done, and that adds in the account name as the first column, as you can see it added it in here. Now, I'm gonna add in a phone number, and let's add in address, 
And oh, I hit done on accident. See, even I mess up sometimes. We're going to add in the ID as well. Oh, I misclicked that. There we go. Done. All right, perfect. So now we've added an account name, phone, ID. Oh, our address field. I must have accidentally got rid of that. My bad. And done. Perfect. I added it back in. My bad. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and hit done. Save. And I'm just going to go ahead and run the debug here just to see if it's working so far. So I hit the debug. There's no input variables. I'm just going to hit run. We're going to enter an account name. Now, I have two accounts that I have set up here. Um, they're under Burlington. I'm going to hit next. And as you can see, it's displayed the two accounts that have the name Burlington in them. It has the phone number, account ID, and billing address. You hit next. This is going to end the flow. Now, we've done that. We're going to add another get record element in here to get the relevant contacts to the account that we select. So we're going to do get records. We'll call this get contacts. And this will be on the contact object. And here's our filter contact records. And we're going to filter these contacts down here. And here's the field. We're going to do account ID equals. And when you click in here, we got a bunch of options again. So you see there's this account data table. Click in that for me. And you're going to hit first selected row. So that just means the row that's selected in our data table. You're going to click that. And then you're going to type ID. And there is account ID. Now by adding account ID in, we're going to get all the contacts that are associated to that account. And make sure you change this to all records once again. And you can store all the fields. And hit done. And now that we've done that, we're going to need one more screen to display the results for us. And we'll call this screen three. And then, yes, hide the header. And then we'll show the footer. This doesn't really matter. You can kind of do it however you want, but I like hiding the, the pause button. Now we're going to add another data table in, which is right here. And we'll call this contacts data table. And then our source collection is going to be from our contacts from Get Contacts. Once again, we got to configure our columns. So let's do name, full name, and done. And let's add in, I don't know, let's add in phone. Yeah, let's do mobile. And then let's just do one more thing here. I don't know if there's an address on these dummy contacts, but we'll see. So now we have our three columns. All right, so at this point, we can hit done. Let's hit save, and we're going to run that debug again. All right, run, search Burlington. We'll hit next. Okay, we have our accounts here. We're going to select one of them. We'll do the Textile Corps of America. Hit next. And now we have Jack Rogers and Tim Range, and they have their information here. And as you can see, you could run through the debug if you'd like, and you can see where it matched up all the records and all that jazz, but it is successfully working. And I can you know, check that for myself here. Um, we looked at Burlington Textiles Courts of America. I have a, a tab here for that account. And when you come over here to the related list of contacts, you have Tim Range and Jack Rogers as the two contacts. So it functioned as expected, which is great to see. And we will hit finish because we're done with the debug. Now, obviously, this is just a kind of sandbox scenario to teach you get used to the data table. But what's really cool is you could um, use this search function to get an account and then update certain fields on that account. You can send an email to these contacts. You, they're in a collection group. So whatever you would like to update on them, you could do that as well. This is just a great example of how the data tables work and how you can you know, incorporate that into your org. But if you found this video interesting, leave a like, leave a comment. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you in the next one.